What up, though? Welcome back to World of Heavyweights, live on WordSports.com. Rest in peace, John Claus. I'm Easy. I spend more racks. Rest in peace, John Young Claus. Chris, Nicholas Koloff, Al Carson, the building, the football guy. We're just kind of chatting shit, talking sports and whatnot. Um, before we got on, did you did you catch that clip of Dan Campbell floating around about him talking about a uh, trophies? That's, that's the next step in the Detroit Lions development there? No, I missed that floating around. Like, let me in. He's, he had actually Chris. Oh, you don't have headphones. Yeah. So he had a one-on-one with Tim Twenty Men, and Tim Twenty Men's like, you know, I, first that's how I game. bookmarked it on my YouTube to watch. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. It's bad night. So, so yeah, Dan was like, yeah, next step is trophies. As it, it's different for Lions fans. That's all. That's all I'm Not saying. division banners, but trophies. No. Trophies. trophies. Yeah. yeah okay. Pull up that trophy case. Absolutely. 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 Well, uh, a guy that. Because we lost him, Easy does not think we're going to win those trophies. He's been distraught the past couple days after losing this guy. The Josh big, Reynolds. The biggest piece of this offense, yeah, Josh Yeah, Reynolds. The, the only piece that kept this offense going. This is why the CJ DJ thing the happened, because y'all just be talking shit. Drink. I say none of those words. He uh, he was very distraught when we lost the Josh The gravitational Reynolds. pull of yeah. opposing coverages, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Defensive coordinators, when they played us, couldn't they, fall they're asleep game at night for Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds, apparently, so speak easy, man. What's, uh, what are your thoughts about Losing Josh Reynolds. I, I appreciate him. Yes. I, I think he had a massive year. He had some big catches, especially first half of the year. I feel like he really was a reliable go to third down target. And one, another great gem for Brad Holmes. It was a, a recycled cast off of the Titans. Yeah. And, you know, reunited him with Goff. And he at least brought us the, he was like our one size factor uh, outside Laporta. Yeah. And good catch radius, not the best route runner, but. I think because we have such a prolific offensive scheme yes. that he is interchangeable. Like I do not the yeah. big my biggest thing is I don't know if he was elevating this offense as opposed to being a complementary cog in this offense. Yeah. Like truly I think the offense does still revolve around the run game, play action passing, packing middle of the field and, and, and designing plays for Amonra and Laporta and Gibbs. Um, but like it it it's interesting that he was a part of our culture, part of our locker room. It was yeah. similar to losing Jamal Williams the year prior. We're losing this guy. Like, we aren't holding on or overpaying to every single cultural fit that is an established veteran here. That's a good sign. Yeah. You're, you're not overpaying for that. But I think we can find another interchangeable part in this offense in the draft. I don't know if – so, like, free agent options. I like Kendrick Bourne. I think one thing that is like-minded with his skill set and our offense is he is an ass kicker in the run game. He'll give his all. Like mm -hmm. he is a he he was Cooper Cup's number two at Eastern Washington. Yes. So you know he had to kick ass in training camp as an undrafted free agent to make it uh, on the Niners. So I still like Kendrick Bourne. And he plays is he on still the free outside. Agent? He's still a free agent. Yeah. Okay. And then like obviously the DJ Chark reunion could make sense. He takes the top off. For cheaper, but I don't. I, those are the guys. I mean, I don't know about the Michael Thomas reunion. I don't know about. Fuck no. Maybe Russell sorry, Gage Michael coming Thomas. off his no. patellar tendon. The one guy we could bring in to compete with Antoine Green would be a Keith Kirkwood, the guy that, you know, uh, Hawaii and then Temple, and he was with the two stints with the Saints. Mm -hmm. the Saints couldn't give up on him. So those are guys that maybe we could replace, but realistically, I think let's slide in another guy in the draft. Um, that has hopefully that big catch radius. Um, plus more, huh? Maybe I said plus more, but that's me being hopeful. Yeah, no, but you had that I think rookie that's the zone, floor, right? They'll at least go get someone in the draft with size. Yeah, yeah. What or, about like the two guys they met with pre-draft or pre-combine? Three guys were Xavier Leggett and Brian Thomas Jr., who were both possibly around that twenty-nine area. Who of those guys would you rather see? Devontae okay. Walker too. Yeah, Taz. I don't know. Taz I don't know if that's not twenty-nine though. No, not at 29. I think, yeah, I was going to say after his senior bowl performance, yeah. uh, he kind of dropped to possibly being available at 61. Yeah. Um, but I love Leggett. I love Thomas Jr. I think we talked about Tom, both of them last time I was on, and I wouldn't rather have one. I'd be happy with either. Um, obviously, I think Thomas provides a little more in the area of catch radius versus Leggett, you know, everyone's calling. I mean, he has some Amon Ra qualities, some Debo Samuel qualities, some Steve Smith, Heinz Ward, that tough, tough guy. I, see him yeah, as like, guy. I, I said my comp for him, if all things go well, if everything is roses and he's the best player that he could be, he's going to be like an A.J. Brown. 
That was my comp for like it. AJ Brown, That's Debo kind of combo. Yeah. yeah. Eats over the middle, mm -hmm. absorbs contact through the catch on the safety. Yeah. Yeah. AJ Brown makes sense, Spence. Um, I know we're talking receiver, and, I, and by the way, I'm I'm down for the rookie too, just because receivers in any system feels like they could just hop in almost every single year. I, I don't want it's crazy, and I I guess I kind of understand like we are wide receiver one receiving like these crazy contracts, but like I feel like every year there's a rookie wide receiver. You're like, damn, in his rookie yeah. year, he's Zay Flowers Puka. became wide receiver one for for uh, I mean I'm, I'm Rossi Brown for us. Like it's every year these rookies come in no matter where Jordan they're drafted. Addison was Jordan Addison was Jordan Addison same. A lot of guys. His yeah. hop in is is seamless fit. I think we can get that in a rookie. Sure I guess writes. I was, and, and they're they're making more of the Josh Reynolds stuff than I was. I was, yeah, he was I know. distraught. I know that's okay, why I leaned into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, I was just, I was just tripping. Yeah, he was. Distraught. I was comfortable with him being there. <laughs> that, that's I guess what I'm saying. I want to bring it real quick to the defensive side of the ball, where I don't know. We talked about the quarterback spot. I actually forgot what I was going to ask you as a chat in the, or a comment in the Wolver Sports chat too. Easy, real quick. Nice defensive end. What's up? While you think of that. My bad. Oh, was just going to say, Al, does it scare you at all? Easy brought up a great point the other day that Xavier Leggett did not produce in college until his fifth season. He never put up more than 167 yards before his fifth year. Fifth, it's a good question. Fifth year too. I think there are certain positions where that one-year outlier um, is a question mark. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the ecosystem of that South Carolina offense that he was in, it's not like it was the best scheme. It's not like it was the best line. It was Rat. I mean, Rattler. Yeah, solid quarterback. He had a solid quarterback that was going above and beyond, despite some of That's the um, elementary elements of the offense, predictable elements of the offense. But also, just you know, go watch any Spencer Rattler highlight. Yeah. And half the throws are him being Ryan Tannehill standing in the pocket till the very last minute mm -hmm. and getting a strike to Xavier Leggett. Uh, it's a good question. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to marinate that. On that a one does make me a little bit concerned too. Shout out to yeah. Gun Guy. Take your pants off. Chris is an offense question. I, yes. I remember my defense one. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just quick, just quickly. The, a name I haven't heard us mention yet is a rookie or a receiver we drafted last year, Antoine Green. Like, yeah. what? A, what is anybody's chances around this room, Al? What do you think of him potentially stepping up, or are you are you looking to address? The I wouldn't be draft? surprised. I think it's personally. more likely that DPJ steps up than Antoine Green. I, I, Antoine Green. I don't. I don't know. I'd s six two, two hundred pounds. Yeah, he, but we barely know. saw anything. Though, I feel so. like DPJ is more of an option than he is for that yeah. wide receiver That's spot. Fair. So, I think DPJ will get. Right now, if we go into it, if we go into the first, you know, before training camp, whatever the mandatory work workouts are in May, DPJ is getting uh, the X snaps. He's mm -hmm. going to be out there in eleven personnel. Yeah, I, it'll. I think. Honestly, when we go 12 personnel, when we go two wide receiver, we'll see more Jamison and Amonra. Yeah. Or some of the two where uh, Sam Laporta is playing some of the X role like we did. Like, that's why our offense is more interchangeable, I think, than a lot of offenses that are more stagnant. Yeah. Um, but I, I like Antoine Green, his possible upside. I think he definitely could make this roster. I think we're sleeping on Cleef Raymond a little bit. I know he's undersized, but... Mm -hmm. I still think there's a reason he's stuck around and had impact plays for us. But I'm intrigued by Antoine Green. I think Brad Holmes has a proclivity for finding gems in the draft at wide receiver, dating back to the Cooper Cups of the friggin' world, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but also Amon Ross St. Brown. So I I'm color me intrigued for Antoine Green. Yeah, I guess the, the one thing, too, to kind of, and even for myself, is maybe it's a little bit of closure for me for the Josh Reynolds stuff. But, like, at times we've missed Amon Ross St. Brown, who is uh, – above and beyond our, our wide receiver one, or these guys do most production for us. And we still produce in those games and won those games outside of the Patriots one last year for the Patriots, Bill Belichick. He kind of has Jared Goff's number. I'm not going to weigh too much into that one, but I know that Amon Ra missed, I think it was the Panthers game this year. I don't know if you guys remember or not. Either way, I know when we missed them, as disrespectful as it sounds, I almost didn't notice. So maybe the Josh Reynolds stuff will, will smooth over a lot easier than. He thinks Josh Reynolds is better than Alvin Brown. Not saying that at all. Who is this man?